Now this is something I've wanted to talk about for a while now, but I feel like the ship has kind of sailed. Who the heck he cares about the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy now, am I right? And really though, a major majority of the vast Final Fantasy fanbase would like to move on from 13, or at least forget it ever existed. It's like a bad, messy anime dream that you're embarrassed to talk about, but still think the animation looks cool. Which it does, come on guys, let's give credit where credit is due. On one side, people view 13 as a mistake, and the other side think it's great and won't shut up about Lightning's butt, but who could blame them? The point is, the opinions are so black and white for the most part, but I dare to ask the questions that have been answered before several times and it's kinda pointless to ask now, but what the heck, let's do this crap. Are the Final Fantasy 13 games bad? In short, no. But in long and decently timed video size, it's more complicated than just no. I want to take a look at Final Fantasy 13 and express my feelings about it as a whole. That's right, kids. Let this Final Fantasy loving piece of trash tell you a thing or two about video games and hope you semi kind of maybe agree with me without pissing your pants at the comment section. But this trilogy is bizarre in the sense that the mistakes that 13 made caused Square Enix to really reevaluate their approach to video games and the future of their series. 13 was the start of something different. And you may think 13 is a piece of poo poo garbage and you're probably right in a few cases but let's judge it together as a trilogy because gosh dang it guys can we not do this today so let's have a little recap of what the snick snack happened with the series as it was coming out. Final Fantasy 13 is announced back in like 2006 and then was released in 2010 worldwide. And when it was announced, people were like, hey, look at that. There was a hot anime lady, cool stuff is happening and bright colors. Final Fantasy 13 looked really promising and looked like a hybrid between 10 and 7. And people wanted something fresh to get rid of the taste of sand and shirtless boys after Final Fantasy 12. The hype builds, the game looks real good and then bam release day people break down the doors at your local game stop little timmy gets trampled in the process and everyone gets their copy of final fantasy 13. the reviews come in and they're all pretty high eight and nines across the board and the game launch was a huge success and eventually selling 6.6 .6 million copies worldwide which is a lot by the way square starts popping those champagne corks and the green lights a sequel little did they know what the aftermath of the launch was you see the problem with 13 is that it kind of gets worse the more you think about it. And a good chunk of the fans started to catch on to that. Real talk, I like 13, but it really only becomes fun about halfway in, and that's a long gosh diddly dang time. The hype was so real with this game that people tried to convince themselves that it was all fun all the time, because this game has the potential to be a real standout Final Fantasy game, but fell short because of some of its design choices. For one, the linearity was kind of the biggest kicker. People took a step back and realized, oh wow, this is just a really aesthetically pleasing looking hallway simulator. On top of that, the combat is painfully automatic in most areas, there's a lack of extras, and the story, while interesting in concept, is not presented in the most cohesive way. Also, Hope is a big crybaby most of the time, and Snow feels like a 23-year-old drug dealer dropout that's dating a high school sophomore, so that didn't help. But once all the problems came to light, really loud Final Fantasy fans started screaming at the top of their lungs about how crappy 13 is. They basically kink-shamed the game to death. Meanwhile, Square is making a sequel to a successful game. That does not, in any way, call for a sequel. Cause guys, 13 may be a black sheep, but that ending is so spot on and has the oddest yet most appropriate music I've ever heard. <sighs> it's so good guys, just my hands. My hands! Anyway, by the time 13-2 was announced, a lot of people had already turned on good old 13. The game comes out and Square Enix puts their hands together and goes, ta-da, and then everyone goes silent. No one wanted this, Square. This is weird. But 13-2 received positive reviews as well, and the game fixed a majority of the problems that was holding the original 13 down. Problem was, the story was so loosey-goosey that it prevented the game from shuffling its way out of 13's shadow. While I think 13 2 story is fun and exciting and emotional, it's it's kinda stupid and does not tie in well with the original. Personally, I really dislike time travel stories, especially when it pops up out of the blue. It creates a whole mess of loopholes and plot holes and rarely is it done right. And my big problem with this is that they had to alter the original 13's ending to make 13-2's story make sense, which in my opinion is very bad storytelling. And also, Sarah is a weak protagonist and bores me to tears. I would rather listen to a dial tone for 10 hours instead of playing as her. Luckily, Noel was there to pick up the slack, but still, I view her as a pink haired ball and chain. Regardless of all that, I have to say 13-2 is my favorite out of the series. Of course, not a lot of people cared about it. Wasn't much to care about anyway, and wasn't exactly a stellar standout, and the sales showed that. It only sold half as well as the original 13. 
The big issue with 13 2, though, is that it showcased Square getting way too ahead of themselves. 13 was so successful in their eyes, they didn't greenlight one, but two sequels. And, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, throw your computer out the window while you can! 13 2 has a really bold ending and bluntly left the story open for another game. And it was so bold, you could practically hear everyone who played it give one massive, are you kidding me right now? Followed by sobbing and then me in the background screaming, dang dong, the witch is gone! But some time passes and Square boldly steps out to announce Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13, or in actuality, Final Fantasy 13 3, which is what it should have been called because the actual title is confusing. In the background, you can hear the Final Fantasy community sigh with a max amount of apathy and the hardcore 13 fans cheer. Lightning is the face of 13, and since she was mostly absent in 13 2, even though she was on the box cover, this was her game, no doubt. Of course, when the game came out in 2014, it was met with odd reviews. Lightning Returns is by far the most polarizing Final Fantasy game in a long time because it's weird in design and everything. It was a game that either made 13 fans or broke 13 fans. It had interesting mechanics, but it was the love or hate it kind. Let me make a little side note here. I am known for making comedy basic beginner's guides, and I've made one for 13 and 13 too. And many people have asked me to do one on Lightning Returns. And I'll be honest, I own the game. I played the game, and I don't want to beat this game. There are certain parts of 13.3 that just kill it for me. I hate constant side quests. I hate time management, and that clock. Oh, that clock. It's all the core stuff of 13.3. I like the combat and the dress stuff, but that's really it. The story is not good. Like, just straight up, we wrote this plot in a week and we have no idea what we're doing. Not good. Things don't make sense. It's mega fan survey for no reason, and the characters have had all the life sucked out of them. The point is, I don't want to force myself to play a game I personally do not like. The odds of me making a Lightning Returns for beginners is highly unlikely. Do I think 13.3 is a bad game? No, not at all. But it just does things that I personally don't like dealing with in games, so sorry, I guess. Now, moving on, 13.3 was not very successful. Even dressing up Lightning in the skimpiest outfit ever couldn't save this game because the sales were... Oh, that's a darn shame. The series' end was anticlimactic, and by the time the game came out, people were so sick of 13 and wanted it to just stop. And it did. Square Enix took notice of it. The 13 series just had the bad smell of corporate garbage all over it because the existence of the sequels wasn't from a place of ambition, but from a company milking a game to death for money. And the backlash was so prominent because surprise, surprise, Square, no one gives a crap about your unnecessary trilogy no one asked for, you dumbass! Okay, so there's the history. 13 shot itself in the foot over the course of a few years, but because of all the bullcrap the trilogy caused, it created a shift over at Square Enix. As some of you may know, 13 was originally planned to be a part of a bigger series, but not directly. From the start, it was part of the Fabula Nova Crystallis series, and let's call it the FNC series for short, because oh my god, that is a mouthful. FNC was supposed to be a bunch of separate Final Fantasy games, but all under the same roof. They shared common themes and lore, and supposedly took place in the same universe. Some of these games include Type-0, the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy, and the ones called Final Fantasy vs. 13, which is now Final Fantasy 15. And 15 is the key to all of this, really. Final Fantasy 15 has technically been in the works for about 10 years now. Originally, it was supposed to be a part of 13's world in some way, although we probably will never know now. But during all the 13 mess, news on vs. 13 was quiet. People thought the game was cancelled, there was barely any news or updates, and then in 2013, Boop! It pops up again and then renames itself Final Fantasy XV. Why though? I think the reason why it changed is because Square realized that if they released another game with 13 on the title, no one would buy it. Sales for 13 gradually got worse and it would fail through name alone. I think Square was proud of Versus 13 in concept. They didn't want to throw it out the window and waste all that hard work, so what's the easiest way to save an idea? Just repackage it, redesign the game, shake it up, make it seem like it was never part of 13 to begin with. So Final Fantasy 15 is coming out soon, we know that much, and the whole gaming community is watching. 13 pissed off a lot of Final Fantasy fans and it caused it to eventually fail. If 15 gets it wrong, I believe the Final Fantasy name is in real trouble. For me, 15 has to atone for the mistakes of 13. But let me just express my general feelings towards the hostility of the 13 games really quick. Yes, a lot of people think 13 is total garbage and Square has definitely not handled this installment well and a lot of the complaints are valid. 
valid. But regardless of all of the crap it's gotten, 13 has brought a lot of happiness to a lot of people, and something about this series tugs at my heartstrings. The 13 games may be weak Final Fantasies in the eyes of most, but they are still good games. Take the title away, and you have a fun, functional series that should be praised for what it is, rather than what it's not. Love it or hate it, Final Fantasy 13 made an impact. It shouldn't be dismissed, and I think it shouldn't be forgotten. And for the record, and a little side note here, for those who diss Final Fantasy XIII's music, get out. I'm serious. These game soundtracks are great, and it's the kind of stuff I want played at my funeral right before they shoot my lifeless body into space. The 13-2 soundtrack is just perfect, and the variety is mmm. Mmm, so good. The soundtrack for reals makes the gosh diddly dang game, you butt nuggets. I don't understand why anyone would say it sounds bad. I've heard complaints about the violins being too loud, that the vocals are annoying, and just really stupid stuff. What's your damage, people? Here's an idea. Why don't you take those violins and just shove them right up your ass? Hope you all enjoyed this video, guys. And if you agree with me, that's great. And if you want to murder my insides, that's wonderful. Why don't you tell all your friends about my awfulness and share this on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr so they know you hate me extra, extra much. Later, you big nerds. Buns out. I literally just dropped the mic. Buns is out. I'm gonna go take a nap.